I'm Brooke. I'm Kimberly. And today is March 28th, and it's episode 10. 10. Big 10. Oop. Jazz hands. <laughs> Brooke did not want me to do that. <laughs> We are a primarily knitting podcast, I would say, but basically crafting, crochet, embroidery, cross-stitching, jewelry, jewelry, any kind of crafting is all welcome here. Um, We are mother-daughter. Brooke is my teenage daughter. She is a freshman in high school. I have a son who's a freshman in college who actually is home for the weekend. Well, for for the night. We have to take him back today. Sad face. You can find me on Ravelry at K Armini, just my first initial last name. You can find us on Instagram at Sweet Pea and Chickadee, and we also have an email address, or if you yeah, want to need to ask questions, at Sweet Pea and Chickadee at Yahoo.com. So, for those of you who are new, uh, Brooke does not craft. Um, she is the comedic entertainment of this podcast, and she also holds stuff up for me and does a really good job of it. And for those of you who are new here, thank you for coming to our channel and checking us out. And for people who have already seen our other episodes, thank you for coming back. Yeah, that's really that's really awesome. So, what's new, uh, Brooke? Ooh, what's new? I got contacts, Brooke guys. Brooke got contacts. I was, she was like, Mom, you know what that means, right? The lighting in the podcast. I'm like, there's going to be so much lighting in your face now because it was just, it took a little bit longer because she had glasses. So I was trying not to get too much glare on her glasses so fellow podcasters who have glasses can understand. Um, so now we don't have to worry about that. Yay. Primarily, though, it's because Brooke plays lacrosse. And she's in high school, and she'll be trying out for her high school team here coming up. And she, she's a goalie, actually. So because she has to wear the big helmet, she's having to put it over her glasses. It was pretty much a pain, right? It's really, like, my, every single time a coach comes in and be like, do you need help? And I'm like, no, he's got to angle it the right way. <laughs> so now she doesn't have to worry about that. So she actually has her first, like, uh, just a practice uh, tomorrow. So she gets to try them out. Aren't you pretty excited? Yep. How is it seeing peripherally, Brooke? Seeing on the sides um, of you? It's weird. It feels like there's... I feel like I shouldn't. You feel like you shouldn't be seeing what's happening? I feel like that's why I don't, I still don't do it. Like, I just turn my head. She's like, I shouldn't shouldn't be seeing this. Yeah. (laughs) That's funny. Uh, Once again, if you hear bells or running around in the background, those are our cats. Um, I was listening, I, we mentioned that last time, and actually I didn't really hear them too much. I just saw us reacting to the, (laughs) so if you see us reacting to some crazy behind the camera, that would be our cats, our two kittens. Um, we can't. Olive. Nyla and Olive, and we can't lock them out of the room because they open doors and we'll come in anyways. So, my husband and I uh, just recently got back from our anniversary trip that we mentioned last week. I mean, it was just like 20 minutes away. We like rented this little cottage on this um, property. It was a good stone in for those of you that live um, near Middleburg, Virginia. Um, it was great. Our little cottage was the bull barn, um, which was so cool. And it was right in the middle of this like pasture that had goats and a llama. It was so cool. I was like, oh my gosh, the goats and llama rocking right by our door. It was so cool. So I actually cast on a couple projects there. Well, actually, I cast on one project there. I was like, I'm probably the only person that was winding yarn before going on my anniversary trip. Seriously, like, she, she's like, guys, we can't leave yet. I have to wind some yarn downstairs. Okay, we're moving. We're moving, though. We're moving to the living room so I can wind my yarn real quick. Because our bedroom is upstairs and my winding, all my stuff is down. In the li- Anyways, so. You should probably move that up. Just. <laughs> it was so funny because I was like, wait, hold on. So I know my husband, he works really, really hard all the time so I knew he'd be also using this time to rest and relax and take lots of naps so I knew I wouldn't be taking those money naps and I wanted to go ahead and knit in the gray outdoors and it was so great it was a perfect weekend it was awesome it was a great refresher I think we just basically took a long weekend and it was really fun all right guys we're moving on to foes finish objects man I just can't believe you're so good at this now Brooke okay my one and only uh, my March DVD socks what what okay Brooke want to go ahead and hold one up a little bit closer this is yarn by Desert Vista Dye Works. This is in the colorway National Emo Day. I mean, those stripes are awesome. They are definitely I really pretty. I love them. Um, so what this is for is I do a monthly knit along for Desert Vista Dye Works. They basically, if you knit a pair of socks in her yarn each month, you like accumulate discounts and free skeins of yarn for the entire year. And at the end of the year, you do all 12 months. You have to start the project at the beginning of the month and end by the end of the month. So there's like no whips or anything like that. And there's like pr- there are your requirements. Like it has to be a three inch leg, you know, so and so. Um, and then if you do all 12 months, by the end of the year, you get a, a specialty colorway just for those who finish. Like she'll never sell, I don't think. But um, it's really cool. I really, it's a great way to make sure I'm getting like 12 pairs of socks by the end of the year. 
and I just love her yarn anyways. Um, mainly she does self-striping, but she does have other colorways. I think last month I did a sock blank. It was really fun. That was my first ever sock blank. But I do love her self-striping. So for this, I did my standard 64 stitches, um, two by two cuff. I think I did like 18 rounds. I mean, I I changed between like 15 and 20 for like a full length sock. Um, I did a standard vanilla because it stripes and they knit themselves. Mm -hmm. um, Brooke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Standard vanilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Standard vanilla. And then um, I always, for self striping, I love the afterthought heel because of that boomerang. I just love that. I think it's so cool. Um, if I'm not doing self striping, my go to heel are fish lips kiss heel, which I'll show you later. Um, and then I do it, a, I did a rounded wedge toe and I just love it. I did actually a pretty long leg. It's like 75 rows for me. I normally do at least 60, for like a shorter leg. But I really like the stripes. I went all the way to 75 and it was fun. So this is my finish. Yay, Brooke. All right, guys. Now we are moving on to whips, which is our work in progress. That's what you guys don't know, which I didn't know in the beginning of the podcast until I put the pieces together. And we're moving on to those now. <laughs> <laughs> Works in progress. So first up are Damon socks, my husband. Um, I already had the one sock done I already showed you guys. Last episode, I had just the cuff done, or I just passed the cuff, so now I've or I just turned the heel this morning. It's pretty exciting. Brooke, do you want to show it up close? This yarn is by Ancient Arts Yarn in the Super Socknado, like, base, but it's because it's a skein and a half. It's That's the only difference, I think, between the regular Socknado. So it's 150 grams. So I chose this specifically because my husband has really large feet. Brooke? How large? 15. Size 15. With dainty ankles, though, I've realized. Oh, my God. We talked about this <laughs> last keep, night. I keep looking. I'm like, you really have rather thin ankles for being 6'4 and having size 15 feet, I feel like. We measured all of us last night. I know. He is 6'4 for sure. Um, so if you want to hold up the yarn, Brooke, this colorway yarn. is a road less traveled, and it's in their 80% superwash fine merino and 20% nylon sock. That's their super sock natto. So they have also a regular sock natto, which is just a 100 gram skein. This is a 150 gram skein, so it's a super sock natto, I guess. I looked online last time and I didn't see any super sock natto base online, or maybe just not in this colorway, but they do have the sock natto base in this colorway online. I got it at my local yarn store, Needles in the Haymarket. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing a fish lips kiss heel. Oh my goodness. We're having technical difficulties. Fish lips kiss heel, which is so quick and easy. It's my favorite go-to um, heel. And I knit 75 rows for the leg. Um, and then two by two. And I did a 64 uh, stitches as well. Normally for Damon, since he's got larger feet, because they are wider, I would do a 72 stitch. But with this one, I tried it. It's, this is a heavy fingering, I found out. It's very plump and luscious and awesome. But because of that, it makes it bigger. Mm -hmm. a bigger sock so this is already bigger than my normal socks for 64 stitch in my other yarn so just so you know if you do that um, the heavier fingering it will change your gauge and I use nine inch circulars almost always and then I usually switch for toes I switch to um, double point needles but I can also do it in magic loop and this is in my cottontail farm bag it's women are that's one of my favorite power. bags I love have. this it's very woman empowering and it's purple my favorite color so mm -hmm. I love it. And I think she only made like one of this like quilted, like where it's all patchwork. She only made one. I snagged it right away. I was so proud of myself that I actually got, I, like usually there's only like a few. I am like the last to know and I never, I'm, I'm too late. So I was pretty excited about that. Our next whip is the Find Your Fade Shawl by Andrea Mallory. So this is almost, I would not even say deep whip stash because I have stuff that's even deeper. But um, I cast this on last fall with every, or maybe summer. I don't know. I don't, but I don't, I don't remember do you want to hold? This is where I'm at so far. I only bring it out because I started working on it on our anniversary trip. And I only got probably like six rows in, but I'm going to show it. This way, if I keep showing it, that means it'll make me want to work on it, maybe. Meaning it'll be at the front, <laughs> uh, front of the pile, at the top of the pile. Yes. All right, Rick, do you want to hold? So this is the top where I'm at right now. I've just finished the fade of this color, and now I'm working on the regular before I do the lace. And this is how it goes. Oh, my gosh, look. I love it. I love it. it. The coat, mom, this fade is really pretty. I'm so proud of this fade, quite frankly. I mean, this is, and I bought this yarn towards the beginning of quarantine for COVID, when COVID first happened last year. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's COVID? Yarn. And, well, okay, so when my yarn store opened up, and so oh, I remember because yeah. we did everything via 
on the phone and pictures. Like, I was on the phone with Marty from Needles in the Haymarket, and they were taking pictures of different fades and sending them to me. And then I was like, okay, hey, take that one and take that one and put it with the other ones and the other fade. And, like, it was – that's how it was. It was so – it was really fun. I always will remember that. Um, and this is really awesome, too, if you, are, if you guys are wondering about this. This is, like, a black that I just had, like, a 20-gram mini skein. I You're didn't black? even use it all. Yeah. Well, it's, like, a charcoal black. It's really nice. I really like it, too. I already – I just had it in my stash. Because originally I was going to start with the purple. I'm like, you know what? I want to go from really dark because it's going to go to really light. And so this is that so far. And then I actually added in a couple more. So what's going to be next? I think this will end. And this is – I'm using stash. So this is my stash, and this will be the ending. So look how light it's going to be. Brick, you want to hold them up? This is Shirsty Cat, and I'm not sure what the other one on the right is. But they're like leftovers I had. They're so great. So this me. one, this like lighter gray, which actually yeah, I'll, I'll pull out. This one will go into this one, I think. Pie. Like I had enough yarn to do just to cut the colors I had, but I wanted to add in some more extra okay. there. And what a great way to use dash as well. Well, it's so also it's, more fun when you add more colors. Yeah, it's always more fun to add colors. And it was just, this is a great, I'm so proud of myself this fade, although Marty helped me. <laughs> I'm needles in the hate market, so thanks, Marty. This is also in my Matter Root bag um, from Matter Root, Matter Root, Maine. But I got it at the Maryland Sheep and Wool. Was it Maryland Sheep? Yeah, it was Maryland Yeah, remember? Because I was like, mm -hmm. it was our first and only time there. And I was. You also got the. Uh, the the little bag too. Yeah, with the bird on it. Yeah, but I really wanted this one because it was the first time coming out with the wax canvas bottom, I think. And so it was like only, mm -hmm. at the time, you can only get it at the show, back in the day. I can't wait for Fiber Festivals to come back. I mean, They're very fun, actually, to go to. I don't even knit, but I just like going to them. It, they have animals they have and animals food there. and I, other crafting, mm -hmm. and it's really fun. Well, yeah, they have other, like, they, like... I think you, if you have a kid that likes crafting, you can just take in there anyway because they have other crafting stuff that they have. Um, uh, like art that's there. They have jewelry. They have the dog, the dog herding or the they, sheep herding. Yeah, they the have dogs. Like, yeah, with the demonstration. Dogs. Yeah, it's really cool. It I cool. loved it, and I wore one of the knitted uh, tank tops mom made that's me. Right. And there's a person walking in front of us one time, and then she was looking at it. She talked to her daughter. And she's like, "See, she's wearing something that her mom made her." <laughs> All right, guys. So um, guess what mom did? <laughs> guess what she did, guys? You know how she's obsessed with that hat? She's the, making another one. The muscle bra hat. I cast out another one I told you last time during my dream knitting that I just want to cast but on I love this one better than the other one I just oh love this yarn. Do you want to show? Oh uh, this is Library Magic from Amplifiber and I'm just in love with it. Look at that look at that kind of stripey but not really like a like a fady stripey oh my gosh so I just love her pretty. yarn. You want to show the actual um cake there Brooke? The cake, the cupcake. So like we said, it's Amplify Bring Our Own Library Magic. This is in her three-ply merino sock fingering base, which is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. Nylon. And Amplify Bring just had an update. This is Sunday. Saturday. Yesterday, Saturday. So by the time you guys see this, which will be Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, um, she'll still, probably still have some stuff in the shop. And you can still use, use our, our code. code. What's our code, Brooke? Sure. Sweet Chick 15. That's right. Sweet Chick 15. I'll put it right here. 15% off, and that's only good through the end of March. So if you see, I'll try this up on Tuesday to remind you guys, but she has some, oh my gosh. I literally, I haven't purchased from her update yet because I'm waiting, honestly, for payday, <laughs> which is Wednesday. So I'm like hoping the stuff I still want is there because I want to get, she's got this mini skein set, and I want a sweater's quantity of this one color. It's like the red granite color. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. Don't buy it yet. <laughs> I want to get, like, because really, I was only going to get three for, like, a color work. I'm like, no, I, that color is so pretty. I just want in, like, a one color sweater. It's so pretty, you guys. I don't know why I'm telling you You're this. You're doing this? You guys, don't do anything. You're doing anything you know that Monica did with that one girl at the wedding dress? <gasps> yes. See, I don't know why I'm telling you. It's so awesome. It's not that great of a color, guys. Don't don't even go look at that that color. Look at the other colors. The other colors are yeah, great. Yeah, I think the color she's talking about, I actually looked at it, and I was like, Mom, why are you getting, why do you want this one? And I think the red granite is similar to this, the dark brown and purpley brown in Library Magic. It was my favorite brown. I know. Just don't look at it. <laughs> don't look at it. So I'm not helping yourself. <laughs> I really want to buy it. Anyways. New, I'm making the same um, size hat I made last time, which is an adult large. And I actually cast this on while my husband got his COVID, first COVID vaccine shot. 
I had to go with him. He's got pre-existing conditions and, like, lower immune system and that sort of thing, so. I'm like, boring. Anyway, back to yarn. They're <laughs> like, you know, you should probably go with him. I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. So we were in there. It's actually very seamless and nice, and we had to go sit in the half-hour waiting area anyways. Um, and so I'm just knitting away. It was actually really nice to cast something on and kind of, you know, be like, cool. But, oh, my gosh. So pretty. It is in my Scrappy Angel bag. This is a large retreat bag. Um, if you guys also don't know, known as the Mary Poppins bag. Also known as Mary Poppins bag because it's like a tapestry Ooh. bag. It's got the wire rim top, but not the bottom. So you can smush it and put it in other bags. But it so will. So you can destroy it <laughs> and shove it down. But if you put stuff in it, it will stand up. Not right now, obviously nothing in it. But look, mm -hmm. it will stand up. So you can use it as a bucket tote. Just leave it open, which I do if I'm knitting from it. I just leave it open. But since we have cats, as soon as I'm done, I close it and zip it right up. Yeah, you tried having them open. I know. Yeah. And I then know. I walked into my room, and they... So my room's down the hallway from my mom's room. And um, I come back from upstairs from watching a movie, and I come into my room. There is, like, ten skeins of yarn uh, just mm -hmm. spread out through my room. It's Nyla. She loves yarn. Nyla's one who loves yarn, but all of us are troublemaker. Not, but Nyla's troublemaker All of us will comes. chew up the, like, tags and stuff, but Nyla's the one that, like, kidnaps my yarn. She, she doesn't do anything to it, though. She just takes it. And then, like, she did chew through one. Anyway, we're not Nyla talking about that part. There. But I just want to mention, this is a cute little, you want to show the, char the stitch marker? That is a whiskers and stitches stitch marker. A little cute little moon. One of my favorite. I love that one. It's very pretty. Yeah. Okay, so... I told you I wound yarn for my anniversary trip, and I did cast something on. So you know when you have a hankering for something new, and I just felt like I wanted to do something new, something I wanted to have to think a little bit about, because I knew I would be on our anniversary trip, not like in front of the television. I'd be out in nature, so I can kind of focus on something if I wanted to. And brioche just was really pulling me in. I've never really done a full brioche project before. I've, I've like toyed with it like a couple years ago, so I knew the basics, but I never actually finished anything. And I really wanted to do something, especially to prepare. My friend Kate and I are going to be knitting a brioche shawl like next month, and it's a Stephen West one. So I feel I, I need to practice yes. because we all know Stephen West is crazy with his stuff, which is awesome. So I needed a good practice. And I didn't want to do anything basic brioche because I knew that. I wanted something a little more. I kind of get the medium range. Yeah, like a medium range. And I wanted like a shawl kind of thing. So she did this pretty thing. So I did this. Uh well, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm currently doing it. So this is Still it. Pretty by Lavanya. I want to say Patrice. It's either Patricella or Patricella. I'm sorry, Lavanya. I'm like, you know when like you read a name, you're like, I can totally say that name. And you try to say it out loud and you have no idea how to say it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks so easy. But and mom, where are these stitch markers from? These little gummy bear stitch markers. Those are also whiskers and stitches. Gummy bears. There's a whole set, a whole mm -hmm. um, set of colors. I chose, I only needed two. I'm actually going to now that I've shown this, I'll use another one to mark where I am. So the next time you can see my progress. Um, and they're still in her shop. I just checked and she does still have gummy bears sets in her shop. They're so cute. They look seriously like edible mm -hmm. so this is the front and this is the back of the brioche the front curls under and that's supposed to happen because this is the top and it's to wear easier like this and do you know what what tv shows it's after brooke this is from stranger things um the netflix original series and this is supposed to be the demi gorgon i think so yeah i mean it looks just like it like if you're looking at it, you're like that totally reminds me <laughs> Like a pretty version. It's oh, really pretty. Yeah. Okay, I right? see it. Don't you see it? Okay, yeah, okay, I see it now. Okay. I like she was like, Yeah, the Demi Gorgon. And then I was like, Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> I, I I totally see it, man. <laughs> you, know, you know when people are like, Yeah, so I, I can show you. You wanna show the picture of it? Because I own the pattern right there. That's a that's a picture on the pattern. Picture. Ding. That's her picture on there. That's what it's gonna look like. It's so cool. I love it. Pretty and there was a bunch of other um, patterns I wanted to, but they were all DK, oh. and I had the yarn already. Basically, I pulled out stash. I'm so proud of myself. Brooke, you want to show my stash? These are both Kim Dye's yarn. Not her Kim, though. Okay. Not me, Kim. <laughs> Kim Dye's yarn. I'm I so actually, I'm the one who said that you should do these two. I, I did. I had a couple already pairs of sets. Like, you know when you get coordinating sets together just randomly? Um, I actually bought these for the hug shot shawl, hug, or the hug shawl, hug shot shawl. Uh, but, and I was like, you know, I'm not going to do that one. I really love these colors, though. So the white, no, the green one is the acrocarp, which I had to look that up. That is a type of moss right there. So it's acrocarp, and that is in the rye sock base, which is 70-20-10. 
70% superwash merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon, which is pretty cool. It's like yak. Yeah, that's probably why it's got that like goldeny undertone on the green. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the white with the speckles is spring lawn, which is on her philo sock base, which is 80 10 10. 80 superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, so it's super soft and luxurious. Um, I don't know, I don't, I know some people are very like, they only want to use the same base throughout the project. I'm definitely not like that. Like maybe, no, even in like, maybe like a sweater, but even then, like I'll use a heavy fingering with a regular fingering. I just got to gauge. It doesn't, I just make it work. I just have fun with the colors. This is in my twig and horn, my twig and horn bag. Oh my gosh, my favorite bag. I love this big old thing. And I put it in there because I was traveling. We were at our, mm -hmm. our anniversary weekend. But then I also used it when I was going into the facility to have my husband's um, COVID shot, his first one. So it was actually really funny because I love camo, first mm -hmm. of all. And my favorite color green is, our, I call it army green, but it's the olive green is my favorite color. We and color. which is like pretty close to like this one. Mm -hmm. And um, when I walked in, I was actually wearing, I was wearing a camouflage shirt and then camouflage shoes, like slide-ons, like slip-ons. And then shirt. No, you're green And then jacket. my green, like, army fatigue looking jacket. And then I had this. I was walking in and I had draped over my, like, across my shoulder. I was like, oh my gosh, I look, <laughs> I'm way too matchy. I really love camouflage. But I love this bag. It's so awesome. And my husband got it for me. I can't remember. What was it? For Mother's oh, Day? Dale got it for you. No, Damon. For Mother's Day, I remember. Anyways, I love it. All right, y'all. And for the first time ever on the Sweet Pea and Chickpea YouTube channel... <laughs> Or ever in life. Not ever in life. Mom <laughs> doesn't have any big zero, an O, if you will, of acquisitions. No <laughs> purchases in the last two weeks. I know this is like, this is a pretty big deal. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. Um, it, I don't know. I don't know. What to do. I was like, I have no. This is an emotional moment. No <laughs> acquisitions. I feel very financially responsible. Like I have stash, and, and I cast on two things from stash. Mm -hmm. I mean, technically, my ample fiber was pretty new. I don't know if it counts as stash. <laughs> don't ruin this for you. Don't ruin this. But no acquisition, so we're going to skip right. But don't worry, I'll have some next time, because my ample fiber, I'm already going to order. I'm sure we'll come by then, and it'll be... Anyways. Okay, so next up, dream knitting. So talking about brioche, I was obviously scouring for brioche patterns, and a lot of the ones I wanted to knit were DK, which I needed fingering. Um, but also this first one, which is the highway hat by Jonathan Tallow or Tallow, um, is awesome, but he hadn't released it yet. I saw it on Instagram. I'm like, Oh, I want to own it that really quick. And isn't it cool, Brooke? It's like, it just, I just saw it was it's released really today. It might've released some other day, but it was released today or it's on Ravelry now. So Jonathan Tallow, go check it out. Highway hat. It is like this cool unisex and it's like basically brioche with like this like spiral thing. It's so cool. You guys go check it out. And it looks good with or without a palm. Yes. He's got it with both and it's awesome, which I think he's like a doctor who like designs in his free time. Is that crazy? Doctors have free time? I know. Well, he must, this must be like his like hobby, like his like de-stressor. Therapeutic. Yeah, I would say. Um, and the next one, obviously, is the Flying Foxtail Shawl. I'm already going to knit that with my friend Kate. We're going to, like, knit it kind of at the same time. Because she already had the yarn for it before. And I was like, that is so cool. So I think I'll have to either, I'm going to pull from Sash, hopefully, or I might have to buy something. Oh, well. Oh, well, uh, shame. <laughs> by Stephen West. So hopefully, eventually, that we'll get that done. Um, the Sizzle Pop Shawl by Leslie Ann Robinson, which is Knit Graffiti on Instagram. That's the one I really wanted to do. Although I saw people were like... Oh, they, yeah. After they finished, they're like, I had cried so many times trying to get this done. I was like, I know the feelings. I already had to whip, rip out that one. Seriously. I'm like, okay, first of all, I'm kind of newish still at it. I didn't, it it's, it's really big. I didn't want anything really big that would take me a long time. It was really pretty, though. It's so pretty. And I totally do want to knit it. But I think it's DK as well. DK weight. Which, I love DK weight. I just don't, didn't have enough of that. And I wanted to use the fingering that I already had. And the last thing is the Spellbinding Cowl by Pam Grushkin. It is so cool, Brooke. Oh my gosh. Like, I'm just going to show it to you, Brooke. It's really cool. It's like a cowl, like, you know, and you can fold it over so you can see both sides, half and half. And I like when you can fold things like a tall one over because it gets really close and um, squishy against your neck, like when it's really cold out. And I like that for like when I'm commuting for work back in the day when I used to commute for work. 
um, you could put it under your coat and it's just nice and cozy. Because mm-hmm. here in D.C., because we're, well, I work in D.C., so I commute in from Virginia, D.C. It gets really cold in the morning, like that wind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so cold. All right, next up, podcasts. Um, I know I mentioned all these before, but I'm going to mention my gang, that's what I've been actually watching a lot mm-hmm. these past couple weeks. Rose Opal Knits, again, I just mentioned them last time, but now I've been, like, binging their, they have, like, 30 episodes or something. I like, I like their podcast. It's a mother-in-law, daughter-in-law duo, and they both knit, and it's so cute. They are, like, they knit a whole lot. Like, whenever I'm watching them, they have a whole lot to show, which is awesome. Um, and they have, like, neutrally tones that they like, which I also like. I just knit more of the bright Pop colors I see it seems as, like as you can probably see um but they're really fun and they're just very calming so they're not mm-hmm. like like Brooke and I are like as peace for peace hot. would like to say <laughs> high, high energy, energy. <laughs> peace for peace is high energy I'm like yeah that's yeah, it honestly. I mean so that's this is like this is how we are in real life mm. if anything this is like a little dialed down this is how we are in real life. Also, Peace for Peace Crafting. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out. It was so awesome. And also, I wanted to shout him out because look, he does have, kind of talk about it in his last episode, but two episodes ago, he crocheted these really cool hanging plant holders. Oh, like, you can put cool. like hanging plants in and like hang them. And I was thinking, I want to oh, hang them in the sunroom. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? cool? You use like leftover, which I have a ton of leftover cotton yarn. Oh, like, really? yeah, for like a washcloth. <laughs> that's her that's her sarcasm right there and like an acrylic and stuff so it was I'm like oh my gosh and he said he crocheted them in like no time flat like during a meeting or something like super fast I'm like oh that's a good idea like super quick knit and like little hangers for the that's cool I was thinking I like, like in that. the corners of the sunroom by the yeah that'd be really cool that'd be cool so I'm totally gonna do that thanks Michael uh, last up, happiness. I talk about her all the time. I love happiness. Yolanda and Jordan. They're kind of like us, but like different. They're a uh, mother and son, and the son doesn't knit. And they're, you guys are about the same age. Like, I think you might be a little older, but it's, uh, it's really fun. And I only shout them out. I mean, I shout them out all the time. But I shout them out again because I just saw that they are recording their next episode. So that's probably going to come out maybe like before ours does or maybe mm-hmm. around the t- same time ours does. So check that out. Their next episode is um, going to be up. I'm so excited. That's one of the ones. Like, you know, you have your core podcast. Yeah. Where I have a ton of podcasts I watch. But happiness is the one that, like, when mom says she's going to watch podcasts, I think of happiness. So, like, when happiness, like, puts up their ne- – like, when it's on, like, they're like, oh, we have our next podcast up. When their next one goes live – that's, like, the first one I'll watch. So, like, as soon as I'm watching another podcast, that's the first one I go to, if theirs is up. So go check out Happy Knits. Their next one's coming out this week. Or just binge a whole bunch of their other ones. They're mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, Brooke, what have you been reading? Because I got a book for my anniversary weekend that I was really excited about, and I still I just did all the knitting, and I haven't even started it yet. So, Brooke. I actually started this book a while ago, but I read, like, ten pages in it, and then I just fell asleep. But then, like... <laughs> so it was very exciting. Well, no, because it was like it was like a slow beginning. Oh. Um, I uh, but then I got back into it like two days ago, and then I finished it yesterday, and it's like six hundred pages, so I like went straight through yeah. it. Um, but basically the books it books called Crave by Tracy Wolf, and um, she has her fourth of the series coming out in September. So this is but, the first one. Mm-hmm, Crave's the first one, and then there's you know Crushed and the other ones. But it's basically about this girl named Grace. Um, after a tragic accident that happens, she has to come live with her uncle and cousin, um, in Alaska, and her uncle's, like, the headmaster of this, um, boarding school, like, this academy, and she has to come there, and then she meets this guy named Jackson Vega, and, um, it's kind of like a whole, it's a fantasy romance, Mm -hmm. if you're into that stuff. Um, so there's, like, vampires. There's and dragons. Dragons. So it, I was actually telling mom about it, and she's like, dragons. And I was oh like, God. yeah. I'm like, I thought this was a vampire book. So, the, so yeah. So there's vampires, there's dragons, and there's werewolves. Witches. And witches. Yeah. Um, and then there's the vampire queen and the vampire king. And then, but the dragons, they can just shift. Dragons. And then werewolves, and are, they're called wolf shifters in the book, and they can just shift to werewolves whenever they want, but they're mm. strongest on the full moon. Mm. Nice. So it's a very good book. I definitely recommend it. It's so addicting. I it was. I don't think you've ever read a book that fast. Yeah, no, I don't think I've had either. It's so good. I texted her one night because I'm like... She doesn't see me for like Friday, six hours. It was Friday night. And before work was over, she came in and like talked to me. I was like, hey, after work, I'm going to go ride my Peloton and take a shower and get in and all that stuff. And she's like, okay. And it was like 10 o'clock at night. And I'm texting her. I'm mm-hmm. like, are you okay? Are you awake? Like, I haven't seen you. 
like, like six hours. hours. Did you come out of your room? She's like, I've been reading. I'm like, oh, okay. And I come in there, I tell her everything, and she's like, oh, I didn't need to know. So you guys, I told her to keep it short. You got, you guys got the brief synopsis because I get the like play by play, and I'm like, uh. because none of my <laughs> none of my friends read. None of them would care. I mean, I care. I just, you know. <laughs> it's like she's trying to like watch a movie. She I'm pauses trying to do it, something, and, she's like, and Brooke gives mm-hmm. me a whole like play yeah. by play, forty five minutes of. And, I, and I'm like, yeah, mom, you should totally read this. She's like, well, there's no need. I know. You literally just told me the whole entire just story totally and all the and all of, like the shocking turns. Yeah. And then yesterday we drove uh, five hours to go pick up my son and bring him back home for the night from college BMI. And as soon as I got back home, I just read it. And we were all good. She was, wasn't feeling well. She was going to take a nap. And then... I didn't even sleep. I, I was, did you nap? She's like, I finished the book. I'm like, I thought you were napping. <laughs> no, because I didn't feel good. But then, like, I was like, you know, a couple pages of my book won't hurt. And Famous it, last words. A couple yeah, pages. It was like, I read 200. A couple <laughs> rows of knitting. It's not going to hurt. I won't say it too late. Basically, books for me is like yarn with you. I love buying books. I mean, I read No. I love mom <laughs> buying me books. That's the correct word. <laughs> All right, everyone. I think that's all for knitting and chit chat for today. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, we, you can. There's you can. also the bell button. It just like makes us feel good. So yeah. go ahead and subscribe. Um, just means you like what we're talking about, what we're bringing to the table. Mm-hmm. Um, you can once again, you can find me on Ravelry at K Armini. Come be my Ravelry friend if if Ravelry is accessible to you. Um, go ahead, and I'm going to link all my stuff, all the stuff we mentioned below, all my project pages I link, so at least if your Ravelry is not accessible, maybe just, like, I don't know if just clicking on, like, the project page and just going to look at the page is okay for you. Um, hopefully that's okay. Um, if not, I always link websites if I can, if there are some for the patterns, um, available. Um, and also come check us out on Instagram and be our friend there. We are Sweet Pea and Chickadee on Instagram and our email address, Sweet Pea and Chickadee at yahoo.com in case we are speaking too fast because, uh, I do that obviously or comment below. We love your comments. So mm-hmm. comment below if you have a question and we'll try not to reply too fast either. I tr- <laughs> I, re- I pretty much reply almost right away. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, or send me an email and I'll be able to, you know, email you back your answer, hopefully. So, um, other than that, we'll see you guys next yep. time. Bye. Bye.